So that's what today's video is. We're gonna talk about some microphones, some microphone usage, and this all comes from me reaching out to a company Loudon Audio and them sending me some mics to play with. And it was such a fantastic experience getting to play these mics that it really blew my mind. So I'm gonna grab the camera, we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna hook some stuff up. I'm gonna show you some mic placements. We're gonna talk through the process and then I'm actually gonna show you the playback of what we record and how it sounds based on the mic and why that's important to you now. So let's jump into it. As you can clearly see playing through a 1971 Fender Twin Reverb. I play through this a ton. We're gonna hook up one microphone here and then a second microphone right next to it. And then we're also gonna use the line out on the U Audio Oct. Let's first of all talk about one of the mics that's kind of the focal point of this and the driving factor behind us. This is the Loudon Audio LS208. One of the reasons that it's so good, besides having um, high pass and low pass options built in right here making the mic even more desirable one of the things that makes it so incredible is it's like an isolated capsule so typically microphones even those that are um, like single direction they focus on one direction they still pick up ambient sounds they can't help but that's quite literally what they're designed to do but this is supposed to be a very 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 focused microphone meaning that everything outside of the cone it's kind of hard to see everything like outside of where my fingers are and back it just doesn't get picked up it's not like your laptop at work when you're on a zoom call and your children are freaking out or your dog's crapping on your couch it's not like that where everything is picked up it's the opposite of that it's what you want and it doesn't require terrible software to do it either it does it by itself it's incredible so so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this one up right now and then I'm gonna compare it against the world's most common guitar mic this is the SM57 you know what this is even if you didn't know what this is you probably got one lying around in a drawer somewhere under your couch or you know in the back of your cabinet wondering what's rolling around back there that's what this is an SM57 let's get it hooked up all right look at that they're the same distance I know this one's a little more off axis. Here's what I'm gonna do from here. I'm gonna run the line out from my aux box, which is here. And what that means is if you're unfamiliar with the U Audio aux, the U Audio aux has a couple of things, but first and second, the most important two features, it's an attenuator and it's a cab IR. So this has the ability to run directly to my interface via the line out feature, which is here, and then it's an attenuator. So if I need to play this at bedroom levels, quietly at wherever, um, because this the twin can be so loud and so heavy hitting that I have the ability, listen, it's uh, decibel notches. So you can hear it clicking and each click up or down gives me the appropriate volume cut or boost. This is an incredible tool for a lot of reasons. We'll do a video on this soon, one day. Um, but for now, the LS208 versus an SM57, and I know these are different microphones, but it's more about showing you how important mics can be, or if they're important at all, to compare them against very, very, very standard gear. We're gonna record some really easy guitar parts and see what it sounds like and just compare them and go from there. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now that we're done playing, now we're going to go back through and listen to these and A, B, and C them against each other so you can hear what they sound like and, and then determine the, the answer to this question, do microphones matter for guitarists? So let's get into it. Um, I'm going to start with the aux. Now... It's a little out of tune, but that's always a little out of tune, so whatever. All right, so let's start from this palm muting part so we can get an idea and then compare them back to back. This is a straight up signal. Here we go. Now, this is the SM57 compared to the aux. I mean, that's not subtle, right? It's not subtle <laughs> in the slightest. So let's listen again. Okay, so I added the, the same um, EQ preset as the others to make sure it's all the same. And it definitely made it a little bit brighter, but it's it's not loud. That's and it's it's still kind of dark. that sound the aux already is it's fuller it's thicker it's easier I would quickly go with the aux sound over the 57 all right so here's the aux quick clip here's the 57 again Now let's go to the uh, 208. I would take the LS 208 any day. The 57's great, like we know the 57's great. If it weren't great, it wouldn't be used on so many things. It didn't sound better than the LS-208. So let's talk a little bit more about, just for a second, let's look at the LS-208 and examine some of the aspects so we can understand what it is that makes this mic in particular so great and why it was that it sounded so much better than the rest. I mean, the aux sounds good, absolutely, but it was also a little bit noisier and there was something about the harshness that I wasn't crazy about where with the LS-208, it kind of rolled back some of the highs even though I wasn't using a high or low pass on it. it. It just didn't, it had the brightness without the shrillness. And the 57 I thought was really underwhelming in general, super warm and it also felt like I was gonna have to crank the signal to get what I wanted out of it. Um, but for like a, a, a hundred dollar microphone laying around, I can totally see using it. I also don't feel bad if I bust it because they're easy come, easy go, and everyone's got a few laying around somewhere. So let's look at the LS-208 and talk about it. Um, this is the Loughton Audio LS-208. Um, Loughton Audio did not sponsor this video, but they did send me this microphone and 
some more microphones that I'm gonna test and hopefully demo this weekend. But I wanted to tell you about this one so you can understand what makes it good and why it's able to do the things that it does. So the website says that the type of microphone that this is, it's a front address pressure gradient FET condenser, FET condenser, all right? So it's a, it's a condenser mic. That's the thing you need to know first. But being the front address, what's really important about that is when I was telling you earlier about how it kind of, like everything on outside of this is not picked up, what that means is when I'm recording and playing the guitar, what you didn't hear was the snare in the background. And my snare on my drums is rattling. And I let it rattle on purpose so that you could hear that it's not being picked up by this microphone. And not because it's not loud, but because this front address is only focusing on the place that I put it. So if I put it on my snare, it's gonna get my snare. If I put it on my vocal, my vocal. And if it's on my guitar cab, it's only gonna pick up my guitar cab. It's got a 32 millimeter capsule. It's a cardioid, cardioid polar, polar, pa Cardio, cardioid, pol, cardioid? That's a heart, cardioid. Cardioid polar pattern. 20 hertz to 20 K hertz, frequency response to dynamic range of 130 dB minimum. Self noise level is minus 15 dB A. I don't know what that is. Three pin XLR and it requires 48 volt phantom power. One of the most incredible things about this is the SPL and dynamic range. Now I'm gonna read this verbatim from the website, so bear with me. Is the ability to withstand a staggering 135 SPL without internal padding, making it the perfect choice for extremely loud and dynamic sound sources. Even at close proximity, the sound of the LS-208 remains astonishingly natural and lifelike. When I started cranking the Fender Twin, I thought it was a little too loud. And then I remembered how much this can take and I thought, I don't care, I'm gonna crank it. It's almost like nine out of 10 right now. Um, I think the amp is like eight or eight and a half or nine out of 10. So I can put this on my snare and just bash the shit out of my snare and not worry about it. I can put it on my, on my twin and I can go full blast 100%, 100 watts, 10 out of 10 out of 10 out of 10, you know what I mean? And I can still not have to worry if this thing is gonna blow out because how high the SPL is, which is amazing. So you're not having to worry, is my mic gonna crap out, gain out, whatever, not with this one. Premium components, uh, analog sound shaping. So there is a high pass right here. Let's see if I can. So high pass 120 Hertz and 50 Hertz, and then a low pass of 8K Hertz and 10K Hertz. Let's, you can see it's right there in the center. I didn't use either one of those. Two dedicated filters allow for immediate sound shaping right at the source, removing the need to change out microphones in order to get the sound you want. So I could have done a little more EQing, but I wanted to show you the flat response before touching any of that stuff. It says the LS-208 rejects off-axis sounds, including bandmates, pets, air conditioning, and room echo. I'm in a garage now, and I've done a ton of work in this garage to make sure it's um, as room-like and normal as possible. You can see all the, the stuff behind me, all the soundproofing, the moving, the uh, what are those called? Like the moving, moving blankets. They're all over the room, they're all over the ceiling. Um, I've got styrofoam, everything. I've done everything I can to make this room not echo like a garage. But if I were in a garage, it says that it wouldn't, you can now capture studio quality sound in poorly treated rooms with the depth and clarity of a large diagram, large diaphragm condenser microphone. Words are hard today. I haven't been this excited about a microphone in a long time. I've gotten a couple different really cool ones, um, some electro voices, all, all kinds of stuff, I'm not getting into that. That's not what this video is, but this microphone just, it did something different. So in the next video of this microphone in particular, I'm going to also compare um, for drummers or for multi-instrumentalists, I'm going to compare the SM57 against the LS-208 on my snare drum so we can look at how the SPL responds to it. Same technique, same approach, same process. Louton Audio, thank you so much for sending this. This is amazing. I use it on everything. I freaking love it. I'm gonna, if it weren't for having to use it on the amp, I would have absolutely used it on my vocals right now, speaking, because it's amazing. It sounds like a broadcast mic. It's so good. I, this, is, this is not even what I was after, okay? I reached out to them about the LA-120s, the overhead mics. I wanted those for drums and acoustics. They said, hey, you should check this one out. And I was like, all right, fine. 
Oh my gosh, they're right. Oh my gosh, they're right. So to answer the question, does it matter? Do microphones matter for guitarists? Absolutely yes, absolutely yes. If it matters for no other reason than your own personal experimentation, you should be diving into the world of microphones. If you like changing out your pickup, I mean, if you watch this channel, odds are you probably like tinkering, right? You like pedals, you like guitar amps, guitar cabs, different pickups, humbuckers, single coils, P90s, gold foil, everything. There's all the different types you like those. You like the, the barrage of pedals that there are in the world. Um, you should now be getting into recording your guitar and trying out different microphones. It's important because it's a part of your tone journey. And if you wanna record yourself and have it sound good and be something that you're proud of and that others can respect, then you need to look at something like the LS-208. Thanks again for watching. If this is your first time to the channel, appreciate you being here. If you've been here before and you haven't subscribed, please click the red button. You know I gotta ask you to do it. Please click the like button because you liked it and you're still watching this far in and comment below and tell me what your favorite guitar mic is for your cab, for your amp, whatever it is your setup is. I wanna hear what you like to use. Do you think that the 57 sounded better? If so, why? How does it fit into a mix? How does it play? What about that microphone do you like? What about of this comparison would you have chosen? Would you have chosen the Aux, the LS-208, or the SM57? I wanna hear it below. Thanks so much for watching. As always, stay tuned. Can you say hi? Mom, I'm going to like it. Mom, you take a Hey, sister. Can you say, can you say thank you for sponsoring this video, Loudon Audio? Thank you, Leo. Thank you.